My magic sword and said, By the power of Grayskull, I have the Care Bears, G.I. Joe, Voltron, My Little Pony, He-Man, Thundercats, Transformers, and of course, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the cartoon legends of the 80s. In an era in which TV began to appeal to the masses with the development of the cable television, Saturday morning cartoons dominated every household, toy aisle, and grocery store in America. However, Unlike their predecessors that made their debuts on the silver screen, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles weren't conceived to be showcased as colorful cartoons or posable action figures, but as the leads in the pages of comic books with deep ties to artist history. Hey Wolverines, I'm Michael Vila and this is Comic Corner. The Superhero Side moves out now. Today's episode, we'll be exploring into the perplexing past of pop culture's most beloved half-show heroes and digging into their true, original origins. In the sewers of New York City, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Donatello, whose simple wooden boom can disarm any adversary, Raphael, no sword on earth can withstand his side. Leonardo, his swordsmanship is unmatched. Michelangelo, master of the whirling nunchakus. Were exposed to radioactive ooze and morphed into humanoid turtles. Under the mentorship of their adoptive father and sensei, Splinter, the brothers master the art of ninjutsu and become New York's sole protectors against the crimes of the Foot Clan. However, their true origins can be traced back to a small comic book studio in Dover, New Hampshire. At the beginning of the decade, American comic book artist and writer duo Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird began working on illustrations together at their first meeting in Massachusetts earlier that year. The duo went on to found their own comic book company known as Mirage Studios. Beginning the company without a series that they could sell to an audience of readers, Laird and Eastman experimented with dozens of character concepts until during one experimentation session, Eastman illustrated a masked turtle standing on its hind legs armed with nunchucks to make Laird laugh. Laird enjoyed this concept so much, he added the phrase Teenage Mutant to ultimately parody popular comic book runs of the time such as New Teen Titans and Uncanny X-Men. As they developed the Mysterious Turtles' backstory, they decided to pay homage to their favorite writer and artist in comics, Frank Miller. At the time, Miller was the lead writer and artist in Marvel's Daredevil run. In addition, his most notable contribution to the Marvel and Daredevil mythos, apart from the countless iconic storylines he produced, was introducing the martial arts and ninja-esque aspect to Daredevil and his world. Not holding back on their level of inspiration, this ninja-esque aspect of Daredevil and his world was heavily embraced by Laird and Eastman when developing their satire universe, referencing further elements of Daredevil by creating characters such as Splinter, who was a play on Matt Murdock's sensei, Stick, the Foot Clan, which is a play on Hell's Kitchen's underground ninja organization, The Hand, or implementing radioactive material into their own hero's backstory. However, in addition to influencing the characters that populated the Turtles world, the dark storylines that can be found in the pages of Daredevil's most famous works were used to develop the overarching plot of the Turtles mythos. In the original storyline, Splinter raised the mutants to be brutal assassins with the sole mission being to ultimately execute the Shredder. And unlike modern depictions of the Turtles that paint Shredder as a long-lasting big bad, the Turtles are successful in their mission and establish themselves as a group of brutal assassins. 
This first issue of the Ninja Turtles, originally advertised in the 1984 issue of Comics Buyer's Guide magazine, is proven to hit with audiences and comic distributors, selling over 3,000 copies in just the span of a few weeks. Although the Turtles' popularity rose to unprecedented heights, their image was far from the mainstream brand that exists today. The family-friendly conception of the Turtles only began to arise after the deal made with Playmates Toys between the creators themselves to license the Turtles as an official toy brand. This business deal was made by Eastman and Laird as a means to successfully catapult the ninjas to mainstream media and cement them as staples in pop culture. Which, after the production of over 400 figures and dozens of playsets and vehicles, did just that. By placing the Ninja Turtles as the third best-selling toy brand of the decade, and among the first to create an animated series. After the partnership between Playmates Toys and animation studio Fred Wolf Films, the Turtles received their very own animated series in 1987. Although the show strived to represent the characters faithfully, to be deemed acceptable to parents and television networks alike, elements such as their color-coded masks, catchphrases, love of pizza, and distinct personalities were implemented and later carried out in future forms of media such as the various film appearances of the Turtles, video game releases, etc. With their expansion towards mainstream media, the Turtles underwent various changes to their original forms, Eastman and Laird still retained ownership and control over the use of the characters. This was until, however, the executive agreement was made to sell the brand to Viacom, the owners of the television network Nickelodeon. Although the original comic style that Turtles made their debuts in has been recreated in recent projects such as the new animated picture Mutant Mayhem and in past Nickelodeon renditions of the characters such as in their third animated series in 2012, the original dark storylines that were introduced by Laird and Eastman back in 1984 seemed as though they would never return to the context of the Turtles until the announcement of a comic book series that would utilize story outlines from as far back as 1987 known as The Last Ronin. The Last Ronin, an IDW publishing series, focuses on the turtles from the Mirage Age, placing them in an apocalyptic future. This series was not only responsible for the reunification of their two creators, Laird and Eastman, after their notorious falling out in 1993, but it also proved the potential for a return to dark storylines for the turtles. Due to the overwhelming popularity of dark tropes making appearances in Ninja Turtle media now over 40 years after the publication of Eastman Laird's original comic, audiences may finally be ready for the original violent nature of the Ninja Turtles to make its return. The ideas of Eastman Laird were already ahead of their time, however, their time of prominence may be now. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for next episode, where we cover everything in the superhero world and beyond. But until then, Excelsior.